and residential cabinet making. Visit their website, allstyleconstruction.ca. The time brought to you by All Style Construction is 6 o'clock. This is Higher Ground Gospel Radio, owned and operated by Higher Ground Tabernacle Ministry. We are located at 3601-118 Avenue, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Streaming live 24-7 at hggradio.ca or download our HGG Radio mobile app from the Google Play Store or Apple Store. Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Reaching you at the highest mountain and the lowest Praise the Lord and God bless you. Pastor Rod Charles here from Bethel Apostolic Stony Plain. We want to welcome you to revival that is happening in the house. March 23rd and 24th, Rise Up Revival is coming to the house of Bethel and you have to be there. There's going to be worship. Amen. There is going to be deliverance. And most of all, we're going to hear a word from Elder J.G. Williams. And if you want to be a part of that renewal and refreshing, you have to be here. Remember, March 23rd and 24th, you have to be in the house so that the Lord can bless you. God bless you. Make sure that you're here. Bring your outreach and evangelistic teams and register online at www.bacsp.ca. God bless you, and I love you. This will be at 501251 Avenue, Stony Plain, Alberta. For more information, visit their website at www.bacsp.ca. HGG Radio. Follow in the name of Jesus. I welcome your Holy Spirit.
Calgary. Join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm Rex Uche, Inheritance Group, and Showers of Blessings Praise Team, live in concert. Doors open at 6.30 p.m., showtime 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60th Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284. 3450. That's come worship the king. Calgary. See you there. My son. HGG Radio. It's all about the goodness of God, what God is doing, and what God continues to do in your life, in my life. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, tell me where would you be this morning? He's been so faithful to you. He's been so faithful to me. It's another beautiful day giving God praises and honor this morning. Lifting up his name, magnifying his name. It's a beautiful Thursday morning. Can't believe it's Thursday already. Yes, my friends. Yes, you made it from Wednesday to Thursday, not by your own strength, not by your own ability, not because you are special, but God spared your life to see another day. Now, you're not exempted from testing and trial. Let me say that to you. Not because you're going through something now, it means that something is wrong. No, you're not exempted from testing and trial. A lot of times we think that the road will be easy. But I guarantee you this morning, you'll have some bumps, you'll have some speed bumps. Have you ever seen those speed bumps? We call them sleeping police in Jamaica. You're driving and all of a sudden you just feel your car just do like that. That's how your life as a believer will be. There are times when you won't even see these bumps in your walk. But I want to encourage somebody to keep on walking. The Word of God reminds us that we walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for God is with me. The Word of God says He anoints your head with oil and your cup runs over. The Word of God says goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. The Word of God says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Maybe the things around you aren't that good, but you're still a good man. You're still a good woman and your steps are ordered by the Lord your God. It is the Lord thy God that puts you to sleep. It is the Lord your God who wakes you up in the morning. It is the Lord thy God that is flowing through your body. He blew his breath into man and the man became a living soul. So you're not dead this morning. You're alive. The fact that you're hearing my voice. In a little while, we're going to open with prayer. Then we're going to make way for our devotional. I'm excited about your future. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Joan Mullings, good morning. Uh, Kathleen Angels, Elsie Knight, Michelle Bennett, Nicole Myers, Diane Brown, Rosemary Riley, Vivine Alexander, Arlene J, Latoya Tingling. I keep moving up and down so the camera focus. Um, it's not focused. Let me see if I can come closer to the camera. All right. Latoya Tinglin, Rosemary Rose, Rosemary Rose, Cynthia Wallin, Andrea Jones, the one and only. <laughs> Verna McLeod, Joycelyn Richards, Pat Henry, Lalitha Wilby, Janice McIntosh, and all those who are coming on this morning. Blessings, blessings, and more 
Blessings to you. I really want you to stay tuned. It's a, a retro um, throwback Thursday. Stay tuned. A word is coming at you this morning. Stay tuned, my friends. Worship the King on April 6th. Edmonton, get ready for Come Worship the King on April 6, 2024. Hosted by MR Productions. Come and experience the ultimate night of praise and worship featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Michael Reed, Chanel Edwards, Glenn Barnes, and Pastor Alric O'Connor. Special appearances from Chosen Generation. And we are his. MC Crystal Reed at the Citadel International Church, 9253 48th Street, Edmonton. Gates open at 5.30 p.m. Showtime, 6 p.m. Adults pre-sold $35. $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call Call 780-284-3450. That's, That's Come, Come Worship, Worship the King, King Edmonton. See you there. there. My soul started to You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio, 12 minutes after 6 o'clock. That's Come Worship the King, sponsored by HDG Radio. And we're diving straight into this morning's uh, devotional. Just before we do so, you know we normally open with prayer. So whoever you are, wherever you are, bow your heads at this time. Also, let me know if you're hearing me clearly. Just state yes this morning. want to welcome my friend Andrea Belnavis, who is on board this morning. How are you doing, Sister Andrea? Trust all is well with you. 13 minutes after 6 o'clock. Mountain Standard Time, 30 minutes after 7 o'clock if you're in Jamaica, 30 minutes after 8 o'clock if you're on the Eastern Time Zone. Blessings, blessings, and more blessings. So this morning, we're still on the topic, the Holy Spirit. We're still on the topic, the Holy Spirit. And this morning, we're looking at the same theme, knowledge, understanding, wisdom. So it has now become something that we all should know. So if you're joining us for the first time, we have been looking at these three words, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Now, we want to understand how the Holy Spirit leads us or when you're led by the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? What do you hear? What do you sense when you're led by the Holy Spirit? Now, I started meditating this morning while I was coming to work. And I remember, you know, when we just started here at HGG Radio, when we started from scratch, I remember the little room that we started upstairs on this very same building and you know god would have allowed us to come into a bigger space and of course we're looking to grow each day and you know of course god is expanding this ministry and we're reaching more people each day other persons are learning about hdg radio but it started from nothing and i started meditate meditating and i'm saying to myself there are times when god will allow you to leave your job, pack your things up, everything, because he wants you to reach just one person. I wanted to type one. That's how the Holy Spirit works. That's one way I'm, I'm thinking this morning that the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit will allow you to go on an interview. You know, you will put your best um, dress on or your best suit on because you want to get a certain job. And when you go to that job and God allows you to go through the interview process for you to drive maybe two hours to work or one hour, or half an hour to work because he wants you to reach just one person. There are times when you go to a workplace and you think that you're going there because you want to earn a salary. You know, you want to make ends meet. You want to provide for your family. Hence the reason why you decided that you're going to take this job. But God already predestined you to be at this place of employment because he wants you to reach just one person. Mighty God. You can be somewhere for three years and the, the, and the reason why God allows you to be 
in this position for three years is because he wants you to have an encounter with just one person. You know, I remember it was Jesus who, I believe it was a parable. He was teaching his disciples as usual, and he was sharing the story about the shepherd who had a hundred sheep, and one of the one of the one of the sheep got missing, and the the parable states that the priority was to leave the ninety nine and go in search of that one sheep that went astray. So think about it. Having think about you being in the situation. A lot of us, we don't want to say that we love money. But as, let's use money as an example. You have $100 and $1, you know, falls in your car and goes between certain spaces. And you have 99 Would you leave the $99 and go in search of that $1 uh, and go between that crevice and those corners just to get that $1? So there are times when we lose a dollar and we're, we're, you know, we're, you know, okay losing one dollar and having the $99, maybe we'll just try to make it up some way. So a lot of us wouldn't go in search of one dollar. But Jesus gave this example that, you know, if the sheep gets missing out of a hundred, if one goes missing, he will go in search of that one sheep to restore that one sheep. There are times when you go to church and, you know, there's a person, there's this one person in your congregation that's missing. You know, a lot of pastors nowadays, and we have to be careful as ministers and leaders, that there are times when we're caught up with the numbers. But God is saying you need to identify that one person that's absent from church and go, go in search of that one person reach out to that person, ensure that person is okay. I, I believe that's how the Holy Spirit will lead us. The Holy Spirit will allow us to do one thing at a time. The Holy Spirit will not fluster you. The Holy Spirit wants us to have, wants us to prioritize. That's the word I'm looking for this morning. So the Bible says, when one soul re repents or comes back to God, the heaven rejoice. Can you imagine if there are billions of angels and the host of angels and everybody who is a part of the team over there in, in, in heaven? Can you imagine if one person returns to God, the whole host of angels and heaven rejoice over that one soul? Picture this. I remember the other day I was looking at, um, you know, I was picturing myself being in a stadium. And um, normally when you go to boys' champs, for those who know or are from Jamaica, you know we have boys' and girls' athletic championships, um, you know, sometime around this time of the year. They normally have the Gibson Relays, and then they have boys' and girls' champs. And, of course, you know which school I'm ripping, the Green and Black, 61 Red Hills Road. You, don't, you know I, I need not to say uh, no more. But what happens is that whenever, you know, somebody's running a race, you can hear the whole... Um, you know, um, you know, the whole crowd begin to cheer on their school and there's this electric atmosphere. It's the same thing that happens when, you know, you minister to just one person and you get that person to turn their life over to the Lord. Heaven rejoice. So it goes back to the point being led by the Holy Spirit. I remember there are days when the Holy Spirit will give you a word or gives you, and gives you an instruction to go over to somebody and to minister to this person. And it's like there's this fear within you or there's this fear within me back in the day. And the Lord is saying to us that he's reminding us that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but that of power, that of a sound mind. Now, when the Holy Spirit dwells within you, it gives you boldness. I want you to type bold, B-O-L-D. It gives you boldness. You become bold. So if God gives you an instruction to do something, if God tells you to go into your bank account and give the church a million dollars, you start getting nervous. Have you ever been in a situation where you're about to take a risk 
and you start thinking about the risk that you're taking. It's not that when you risk what you're doing, it won't work, but you're willing to do it because you're doing it unto God and God is leading you. Mm. I want to encourage somebody this morning that if the Holy Spirit leads you, if the Holy Spirit gives you the vision, then the Holy Spirit will make the provision. So if it's a case where the Holy Spirit tells you to go and, you know, do something crazy, and a lot of times we would go back to God and say, God, is it you that is speaking to me? And you will get confirmation upon top of confirmation. The Lord will show you, hey, I'm the one that's talking to you. You know, I remember recently, you know, something happened in my life personally. And I'm saying, God, I'm questioning this because normally I hear from God. I know when God is talking to me. God speaks to me in dreams and visions. I hear the audible voice of the Lord speaking to me at times. And then I heard something recently and I'm still not, still not at ease. The Lord has to show me something. It, it, I, I can't even explain. But when the time comes, I will give you a testimony. I will share the testimony with you. But I remember there were days when the Lord would have lead, led me to go over to somebody and to say something to them. Maybe Jesus loves you or something. And there's this fear. But as soon as I, you know, become bold, you know, build myself up, you know, praying in the Holy Spirit, you know, I'll get this boldness and I'll go over the person and say, the Lord loves you. And that's it. God gives you a simple instruction. Go over to that person and tell them that Jesus loves you. You just go over there. But there are times when you're afraid because you're not in Jamaica or, you know, it's on the bus and, you know, you don't normally talk to people. So why is it that, you know, it could be, is, my, is it my mind that is talking to me? That There are times when we say, no, man, I'm a mind. I tell me some need to go over to that person and say, um, you know, Jesus loves you. But whenever the Holy Spirit is leading you, it's like it, it feels like it's your entire body that's pushing towards a certain direction. I remember when I came here, I knew it was God who was leading me because I could feel the, my body, my entire body pulling me into a certain direction. And I thank God for those who were a part of the process for me being here. Because it takes boldness, it takes courage to start something from scratch. To be in the position that we're in right now, God would have given us that spirit of boldness. Somebody had to be obedient. And that is why it goes back to another point as it relates to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is leading you, and if you make up in your mind that you're not going to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, then God will use somebody else. So don't believe that you're the only person that God can use. God can use you even when you're not living right. And, and that's another thing uh, as it relates to the Holy Spirit. We believe that, you know, because, you know, we are, or, or let me put it this way. I want to speak about myself personally first before I speak about somebody else. So God will use me. But there are times when I sin. There are times when I fall short, very short, even holding on to a thread. I'm, you know, there are times when I, I, I fall way, 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 way below the bar. And a lot of you looking at me, no, I'm not going to any bar. I'm not, you know, no. But there are times when I go way down. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So there are times I, I sin. There are times when I'm, when I'm not living the life that I'm living. There are times when I'm not reading the word of God. There are times when I'm not on fasting. There are times when I don't do certain things that should be in line with what God wants me to do. But what I'm saying to us is that even when we fall short, God will still use you once you make yourself available. I'm not telling you to go out there and sin and to live a life below the standards which the Holy Spirit, because it's the Holy Spirit that helps us to live 
a certain standard. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us on a daily basis. You know, I remember the other day, I believe it was Pastor Clive was sharing a message about making certain decisions. And there are times when we only ask the Holy Spirit um, direction when we're making some huge or some big decisions. When the Holy Spirit should be a part of your daily routine. No, I remember it was a certain pastor. I won't call the name of the pastor, but somebody close to me was sharing a story about his pastor. And one morning, his pastor woke up in the early morning and he went before the Lord and he started praying. And the pastor heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. Go and brush your teeth. Your breath stink. And a lot of you got to look at me strange this morning. <laughs> oh my goodness you're gonna say the holy spirit is gentle and you know you guys are gonna look at me strange but that's the story i heard i'm just going by based on what and the pastor was the one who said that the holy spirit said he should go and brush his teeth and come back and start praying again i'm not telling you that you need to brush your teeth all the time <laughs> you need to do all of that I'm not saying that. I'm th there's nothing in the Bible that states that you need to brush your teeth, you need to bathe. But we know that when we read the Bible, whenever, you know, if you read the Old Testament, you know, I remember back in the day when you read, read the Old Testament, what you'll see is that whenever God is coming around or whenever there's a time set apart to meet God, you know, you'll hear about the children of Israel, you know, they're cleansing themselves, you know, washing their feet, you know, preparing themselves, sanctifying themselves um, to meet God. So I remember even the first time I was getting ready to share um, a message at church, maybe in front of about 500 people at the Lighthouse Assembly. And um, I remember my bishop said to me, um, you know, to get ready because I'm going to be sharing the word this Sunday. And I remember one of the things he said to me was to sanctify myself. I didn't know what sanctification mean. I didn't know what sanctify means. But it means to be set apart. It means to be holy. It means to be blameless. So whenever we're going into the presence of God, you know, so what I'm basically saying is that the Holy Spirit can use you when you're living right and when you're not living right. I, yesterday I was talking to one of my friends I call him my brother. I won't say his name, but he knows he knows himself. And you know, we were having a conversation, and I believe he was quoting the scripture says, "The gifts and the callings of the Lord um, they're without repentance." You know, I really want somebody to help me to quote that scripture there, um, and where the, the the and where the reference is. So not because you, you fall and you, you're gone off a straight doesn't mean that God won't use you. Because if there's nobody available and you're the one that makes yourself available, he will use you. But what I'm saying to somebody this morning is that we need to have a personal relationship with God. And we need to ensure that our relationship with God is our number one priority. It's not about being used by God. It's about having a relationship with God. There's a totally different thing. Nobody wants to be in a relationship where they're just constantly being used. And that is what's happening to us. A lot of us as Christians, we're just being used, but we don't have a relationship. The Holy Spirit wants us to have a relationship with him. The Bible declares that the people that know their God, they shall be strong. In other words, when we see that word know there, it means intimate. It means having a personal relationship with God. So a lot of us are being used by the Holy Spirit, but we don't have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. So you're just being used. Have you ever been in a relationship where you're just being used in that relationship and you don't have, and the relationship is not there with that person? Think about it. You're in a working relationship and you're just being used to provide the work, but there's no other relationship. There's no relation between you and the person that's in that working relationship, all they need you to do is just to produce the work. And once you're producing the work, everything is okay. 
they're not concerned about your well-being they're not concerned about anything concerning you all they are concerned about is you doing the work you're in a relationship all they need is to do this all they need is to do that they want you to cook they want you to clean they want you to you know the rest but they don't really want have a relationship with you so not because you preach a good message yesterday or on sunday or on saturday and you're not and then when you you're through preaching the message you don't have a relationship with god i remember recently i heard somebody saying that you know there was the presence of god was rich in the church and i remember the you know the person was praying and you know in the prayer they would have said you know let's you know um thank you lord like basically what they're saying is like thank you lord for your presence in church today and as we go into this week join us again next sunday lord for another encounter of your presence but nothing is wrong with him or that person or she i won't um specifically say what gender it is but what i'm saying is that there are times when things like that we pray in error because what we should be saying is that lord let your presence continue to flow as we go home throughout the week every minute every second every hour we need to be in god's presence so being in god's presence having that encounter is not just when you come to church we just use church as a place like a theater or maybe it's a big stage where everybody's is acting have you ever uh, let me be here myself this morning let me just continue with the holy spirit a lot of us are good actors when we're at church we put on a show everybody's running up and down everybody's speaking in tongues you know what you should be doing you should be running up and down at your home you should be running up and down in the streets same actions that you display in church you can do it in the public you can run up and down and you can shout some hallelujahs why wait until you get to church is it illegal for you to go out in the public and shout hallelujah are you bold enough to go into the public and to shout those hallelujah i like this comment here it should be a lifestyle so practicing the presence of God having a relationship with the Holy Spirit listening to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can speak to you audibly the Holy Spirit can speak to you in dreams the Holy Spirit can in this light there's a force that will will come upon you you know when i think about acts chapter 2 and i want to to you know share a revelation i got from this um passage this morning let me see if i can find um what this passage says as we're speaking about the holy spirit and it says the holy spirit comes at pentecost and it says when the day of pentecost came they were all together in one place notice the number 1 comes back here all of them were in one place they were on one accord suddenly a sound like a blowing of a, a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting so i'm reading the niv version they saw what seems to be tongues of fire notice the word there fire now fire is something that purifies fire is something that brings heat and i want to share based on what the lord said to me this morning personally and you know that separate separated and came to rest on each of them so the fire the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them and all of them were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in an other in other tongues as the spirit enabled them and in other translation as the spirit gave them utterance but what i gathered from here when i saw the word fire what comes to mind is purification another thing that came to mind was boiling point everything in this earth has what you call a boiling point if you put water on the stove in a pot and you turn on the stove automatically what will happen is that 
there comes a time when the water begins to boil. You begin to see the bubbles uh, rapidly moving up and down. There is some heat that needs to be applied to a lot of us. And the Holy Spirit will bring that heat upon your life. And that is the reason why this morning I was thinking about the fact that there are times when the Holy Spirit will not spare us from testing and trial. Because He wants to have that heat. He wants to keep you in line. There are times when some problems take place in your life and you're questioning God and God allows these problems, God allows these testing, God allows these trials, God allows these scenarios, God allows these situations because he wants to keep you in alignment. The Holy Spirit is there, always there, to give you insight to encourage you, to comfort you. The Bible says that Jesus said, when I leave this earth, I will, the, the, my Father will send a comforter. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. So even though you're going through what you're going through, the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you. The Holy Spirit is there to keep you in alignment. The Holy Spirit is there to keep that heat upon your life that will constantly purify you. And don't be afraid to be broken. You remember what I shared yesterday when I spoke about David? David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 17 of Psalm 51, it says, a broken spirit and a contrite heart the Lord will not despise. There are times when you're feeling empty or feeling broken, but God will not leave you. God will not despise you. The potter wants to put you back together again God wants to use you there are times when God will allow you to break down because he wants to mold you again he wants to build your character I'm at a place now where I've been through so much but I thank God for all the tests I thank God for all the trials those that I've experienced in the past and those trials in which I'm experiencing now because it allows me to draw closer to the Holy Spirit. If you didn't learn anything this morning, remember to draw close to the Holy Spirit. Have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Word of God says, draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. How do we draw close to God? We draw close to God through His Holy Spirit. Our spirit connects with the Holy Spirit, and it connects us to God. God wants you to be connected to him, to hear his voice when he speaks. His voice makes the difference. And when he speaks, he releases every troubled mind. You know when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. But don't look on things physically. And I always use money as an example because a lot of times we hold on to money. We are afraid to let go of the money. We prioritize bills over doing what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. I'm not telling you to be irresponsible. But the Holy Spirit will give you instructions. You remember the prophets of old? Whenever, you know, a miracle is about to take place, there's always a level of instructions. I remember, I believe it was a woman. There are different things in the Bible, and the woman wanted oil, and she said, go and get the empty jars. Um, I remember, I think it was Elijah said, bake something for me first. So there are so always instructions that are given before a miracle. You have to obey what the Holy Spirit is saying. So before you experience what God wants you to experience, then you have to obey his instructions. God is leading you. God is instructing you. Listen to his voice this morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you, God, for the listeners of HGG Radio, those who are listening near and far. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that is with us this morning. And you promised in your word that you will never lead us nor, leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, divine God, that we will be led by you. And whatever you have called us to do, whatever you're showing us in this season, help us not to be ignorant, but help us to open up our eyes to see what you're showing us, to do what you tell us to do, and to go the direction you want us to go. 
Lord. Thank you, God, for blessing us in the city. Thank you, God, for blessing us in the field. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us in our going out. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us in our coming in. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that is in each and every one of us, that's pulling us closer to you. Thank you, divine God, that we will experience your presence in a powerful way in this season because we will lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we will ask that your spirit will lead us. Lead us into all truth because your word declares that you are a spirit and they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, God, for leading us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen and amen. And the final thing I want to leave with us this morning, we'll continue and maybe we'll go a little bit deeper into this. Whenever we're, you know, being used by the Holy Spirit, presentation is important. How we present ourselves. And that's a topic for tomorrow. Presentation. How do you present yourself as an ambassador for the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I really want us to think about it. Think about it, my friends. Think about what I just said a while ago. How do we present ourselves as people who God will use and use mightily? Stay tuned, my friends. There's a blessing with your name written on it. HGG Radio. Praise the Lord and God bless you. Pastor Rod Charles here from Bethel Apostolic Stony Plain. We want to welcome you to revival that is happening in the house. March 23rd and 24th, Rise Up Revival is coming to the house of Bethel and you have to be there. There's going to be worship. Amen. There is going to be deliverance. And most of all, we're going to hear a word from Elder J.G. Williams. And if you want to be a part of that renewal and refreshing, you have to be here. Remember, March 23rd and 24th, you have to be in the house so that the Lord can bless you. God bless you. Make sure that you're here. Bring your outreach and evangelistic teams and register online at www.bacsp.ca. God bless you, and I love you. This will be at 501251 Avenue, Stony Plain, Alberta. For more information, visit their website at www.bacsp.ca. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 you're tuned to HGG Radio, reaching at the highest mountain and the lowest valley. You're inside the Hope of Glory Morning Show with your truly Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. I really wanted to stay tuned this morning. I know there is a blessing with your name written on it. It is now time for us to get into the Word of God. I wanted to tie Word, R, oh, R, Jesus, love me little children, W-O-R-D. So I want you to type the word, word this morning. We're going to take, we're getting into the word of God. It is now 645 Mountain Standard Time right here on your station of choice, Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Rashin is spelling word and he starts with the letter R. Um, not because my name starts with the letter R, but you know, it's just one of those days. I want you to pray for me as I learn how to spell the word, word which is W-O-R-D. 
All right, stay tuned, my friends. I want you to get ready this morning to hear Zechariah chapter 7, 8, and 9. I really want you to stay tuned, keep my company. It's a retro Thursday, and I know there will be some songs of old, of course, coming up at 8 o'clock. It's going to be time for the program expectation with pastor and teacher Dean A. Brown. I really wanted to stay tuned. I wanted to listen to the word of God, courtesy of our friends over there at Faith Comes by Hearing. Listen and be blessed. Uriah, chapter 7. On the fourth day of Kislev, the ninth month of the fourth year that Darius was king of Persia, the Lord again spoke to me. It happened after the people of Bethel had sent Shereza with Regum Melech and his men to ask the priests in the Lord's temple and the prophet to pray for them. So they prayed, Should we mourn and go without eating during the fifth month, as we have done for many years? It was then that the Lord All-Powerful told me to say to everyone in the country, including the priests, For seventy years you have gone without eating during the fifth and seventh months of the year. But did you really do it for me? And when you eat and drink, isn't it for your own enjoyment? My message today is the same one I commanded the earlier prophets to speak to Jerusalem and its villages when they were prosperous. And when all of Judah, including the southern desert and the hill country, was filled with people. So once again, I, the Lord All-Powerful, tell you, see that justice is done and be kind and merciful to one another. Don't mistreat widows or orphans or foreigners or anyone who is poor and stop making plans to hurt each other. But everyone who heard these prophets stubbornly refused to obey. Instead, they turned their backs on everything my spirit had commanded the earlier prophets to preach. So I, the Lord, became angry and said, you people paid no attention when I called out to you, and now I'll pay no attention when you call out to me. That's why I came with a whirlwind and scattered them among foreign nations, leaving their lovely country empty of people and in ruins. Chapter 8 The Lord All-Powerful said to me, I love Zion so much that our enemies make me angry. I will return to Jerusalem and live there on Mount Zion. Then Jerusalem will be known as my faithful city, and Zion will be known as my holy mountain. Very old people with walking sticks will once again sit around in Jerusalem, while boys and girls play in the streets. This may seem impossible for my people who are left, but it isn't impossible for me, the Lord All-Powerful. I will save those who were taken to lands in the east and the west, and I will bring them to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be their God, faithful to bring about justice. I am the Lord All-Powerful, so don't give up. Think about the message my prophet spoke when the foundation of my temple was laid. Before that time, neither people nor animals were rewarded for their work, and no one was safe anywhere because I had turned them against each other. My people, only a few of you are left and I promise not to punish you as I did before. Instead, I will make sure that your crops are planted in peace and your vineyards are fruitful, that your fields are fertile and the dew falls from the sky. People of Judah and Israel, you have been a curse to the nations, but I will save you and make you a blessing to them. So don't be afraid or lose courage. When your ancestors made me angry, I decided to punish you with disasters, and I didn't hold back. Now you no longer need to be afraid. I have decided to treat Jerusalem and Judah with kindness. But you must be truthful with each other, and in court you must give fair decisions that lead to peace. Don't ever plan evil things against others, or tell lies under oath. I, the Lord, hate such things. The Lord All-Powerful told me to say, People of Judah, I, the Lord, demand that whenever you go without food as a way of worshiping me, it should become a time of celebration. No matter if it's the fourth month, the fifth month, the seventh month, or the tenth month, 
you should have a joyful festival. So love truth and live at peace. I tell you that people will come here from cities everywhere. Those of one town will go to another and say, we're going to ask the Lord All-Powerful to treat us with kindness. Come and join us. Many people from strong nations will come to Jerusalem to worship me and to ask me to treat them with kindness. When this happens, ten people from nations with different languages will grab a Jew by his clothes and say, let us go with you. We've heard that God is on your side. I, the Lord All-Powerful, HGG Radio. Chapter 9. This is a message from the Lord. His eyes are on everyone, especially the tribes of Israel. So he pronounces judgment against the cities of Hadrach and Damascus. Judgment will also fall on the nearby city of Hamath, as well as on Tyre and Sidon, whose people are clever. Tyre has built a fortress and piled up silver and gold, as though they were dust or mud from the streets. Now the Lord will punish Tyre with poverty. He will sink its ships and send it up in flames. Both Ashkelon and Gaza will tremble with fear. Ekron will lose all hope. Gaza's king will be killed and Ashkelon emptied of its people. A mob of half-breeds will settle in Ashdod and the Lord himself will rob Philistia of pride. No longer will the Philistines eat meat with blood in it or any unclean food. They will become part of the people of our God from the tribe of Judah. And God will accept the people of Ekron as he did the Jebusites. God says, I will stand guard to protect my temple from those who come to attack. I know what's happening, and no one will mistreat my people ever again. Everyone in Jerusalem celebrate and shout, Your king has won a victory, and he is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey. He comes on the colt of a donkey. I, the Lord, will take away war chariots and horses from Israel and Jerusalem. Bows that were made for battle will be broken. I will bring peace to nations, and your king will rule from sea to sea. His kingdom will reach from the Euphrates River across the earth. When I made a sacred agreement with you, my people, we sealed it with blood. Now some of you are captives in waterless pits, but I will come to your rescue and offer you hope. Return to your fortress, because today I will reward you with twice what you had. I will use Judah as my bow and Israel as my arrow. I will take the people of Zion as my sword and attack the Greeks. Like a cloud, the Lord God will appear over his people, and his arrows will flash like lightning. God will sound his trumpet and attack in a whirlwind from the south. The Lord All-Powerful will protect his people, and they will trample down the sharpshooters and their slingshots. They will drink and get rowdy. They will be as full as a bowl at the time of sacrifice. The Lord God will save them on that day because they are his people, and they will shine on his land like jewels in a crown. How lovely they will be Young people will grow there like grain in a field or grapes in a field. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. We just heard the reading of Zechariah chapter 7, 8, and 9. Really hope you were blessed by the reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying thanks be to God. Let me hope your morning is going well. It could be afternoon, evening, depending on your time zone. Thank you so much for making it Higher Ground Gospel Radio. I want to remind you, coming up at 8 o'clock, it's going to be time for the program Expectation with Pastor and Teacher Dean A. Brown. Stay tuned. Join Pastor Dean Brown inside of the program Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, right here on HGG Radio. Listen to me, folks. I have peace when I go to bed at night. I have joy in my life. 
But because of all that God has done in my life, you've come too late to tell me that God is not real. Come and expect a blessing, healing, deliverance, and a breakthrough, and a word from heaven. That's Expectation, Mondays to Fridays at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time with Pastor Dean A. Brown out of Bronx, New York. Minister Renee, in collaboration with Total Well Women's Community, presents a woman's virtual conference and birthday prayer retreat under the theme, She Was Never Alone, April 25th through 27th. Come join our intercessors for prayer at 4.30 a.m. and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Here presenters Minister Olive Grant out of Jamaica and Minister Donna Scott out of New York, 7.30 p.m. nightly. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Get your tickets early on SpurOpen.com at Totally Well Women's Community Women's Virtual Conference. Listen, save the date. Don't be late. See you online. Join us for the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast, where we discuss matters close to the heart. This and every Saturday at 8 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on HGG Radio. I am your host, Dr. Lincoln Bryan, alongside your co-host, Pastor Clive Atkinson, Bishop Hopeton Morris, and Elder Edmund Muir. The Iron Man and Parman Podcast. We're not just talk, we're informative. HGG. You're tuned to Higher Ground Gospel Radio. I want to say good morning to you. If you've just joined us, welcome. Tell me, tell me, tell me, how is your day going so far? It is March 14, 2024. Maybe it's your birthday, maybe it's your wedding anniversary, or maybe you're just celebrating life. I'm really, really happy for you this morning. Thank you so much for making it HGG Radio, Higher Ground Gospel Radio. I want to say blessings to those who have just joined us. Thank you so much for being on board. Those who have, would have been with us from as early as 6 o'clock or even earlier than that time. My friends, uh, Joan Mullings, she tuned in from about 5.40. Um, Kathleen, 5.44. Um, Elsie, 5.50. So I really want to thank you, Michelle Bennett, 5.53. Um, Nicole Myers, 556, and of course, Diane Brown, she was on from as early as 6 o'clock, Rosemary Riley, and the list goes on and on. Really want to thank you always for just being faithful, for coming on each morning and pulling from the well of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's word, words are unlimited. God's words are unlimited. There's always a word for you. Remember to invite a friend, tell a friend about what we're doing here at HDG Radio, what we're doing inside the Hope of Glory morning show. A blessing awaits you this morning. The hand of the Lord rests mightily upon you. The Spirit of the living God dwells within you, and no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I want you to stay tuned, my friends. As we continue on this retro Thursday, I want you to come on over to hggradio.ca or I want you to continue to listen on the HGG Radio mobile app. So many things to look forward to this morning. And I know that there's a blessing with your name written on it. Want to say good morning to you, my friend. Valerie Lodge, blessings to you. Thank you so much for being on board. Errol Douglas, blessings to you. Charlene Edwards, blessings, blessings. Ilone Taylor, my friend Claudette Hopwood, and all those who are on, blessings, blessings, and more blessings. I want you to come on over and let's have a great time playing those retro songs on this retro Thursday right here on HGG Radio. Stay tuned. There's a blessing with your name written on it. This is Higher Ground Gospel Radio. Mm -hmm. 